Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. Here's the problem we're going to be going over today. We're going to use part one of the fundamental theorem of calculus to find the derivative of the function g of y equals the integral from 2 to y of t squared times sine of t dt. So this is my next installment where I show you how to use the formulas that are on my Calculus 2 study guide. If you haven't already grabbed that, go check it out in the description. There's a link where you can go find that study guide. It's all digital, so you can go download it right now and start using it right away. Um, but this one is obviously going to be about the fundamental theorem of calculus part one, which is one of the formulas on that study guide. So basically what part one of the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us is that if we have some function which is continuous on the inter interval from A to B, then we can define this function G of x, which would just be the integral from a, some unknown constant a, to x of our function f of t with respect to t. And this would be true, you know, on this entire interval from a to b. And the interesting thing about this function g is that it is an antiderivative of f, which basically just means g prime of x equals f of x. And again, that would be for all x values between a and b. So basically, relating that back to this initial you know, function that we have, first of all, we need to make sure that our function f, which is this function here within the integral, is continuous for all x's between a and b. t squared and sine of t are both continuous everywhere. So as a result, the product of those two things would be continuous everywhere as well. So since we know this function within this integral here is continuous everywhere, we can basically say that this fundamental theorem of calculus part one will hold up no matter what a and b we pick. So what that means is, if we're trying to find the derivative of this function, we're trying to find g prime of y, right? This is what the question is asking us to find. Well, by the fundamental theorem of calculus part one, since this function g here is defined as just the in integral of this function f of t from some unknown constant a to our variable x, which lines up with our x here, basically tells us that the derivative of this thing is just back to our original function. So essentially what this is saying is the derivative of the integral will just leave us with whatever this function is in here, as long as we're integrating from some constant to our variable x, or you know whatever this variable here would be. In this case, we're integrating from our variable y, right, from some constant to, to, to our variable y, and we're integrating this function f of t. So basically we have, that f of t in this case is t squared sine of t. And if we integrate that f of t from some constant up to our variable, which is y in this case, obviously the letters are a little different, but the, the concept is the same. It's just a dummy placeholder variable, basically. Since it's x here, we can treat y the same here because it tells us it's a function of y. So as a result, Basically, since this kind of format here matches up with exactly what we're given here, we know that the derivative of this thing would just be whatever this function is in here, whatever our f of, f of t is. But obviously, we need to convert it to the right variable. So doing that is just going to give us g prime of y is just f of y, which is basically just taking this t squared sine of t and replacing our t's with a y. So that just gives us y squared times sine of y. And that would be the derivative of this function g of y up here. So like I said, this fundamental theorem of calculus part one and part two, which wasn't discussed in this video, but those those theorems are both on my Calc 2 study guide, which a link is that'll take you to that study guide is down in this description where you can go purchase that. It's something I just came out with. It should be a huge help to you as you work through Calculus 2 homework and study for tests. So go check that out at the link down there. Thank you and see you next time.